I dressed up today to make sure you guys take us seriously. Love them. My name is Ryan Davis. Uh, I'm a member of CLRB. I'm Aaron Patterson, also a member of CLRB. We both work for at and Interactive, um, but we've got some caveats about that. <laughs> <laughs> so just to start, um, we're not here to trash anyone else's code. Um, this is not the works, practices, show, and tell. Um, this is about well-engineered code, but really bad ideas. So we said that, blah, 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 boring. Uh, yeah. Uh, so please note, uh, none of this presentation or software was supported, sanctioned, endorsed, or even tolerated by our employer. <laughs> so, at and Interactive, please don't hire us. <laughs> so, um, we both had the opportunity to do each other's bio. So, Aaron Patterson uh, <laughs> likes kittens, ponies, and Vim. He's totally in love with his mustache. And when you really think about it, he likes writing C a lot more than he likes writing Ruby. Oh, actually, you know what? Um, these slides are kind of low. I'm, I'm seeing a number of people use next. So um, we thought about pushing all of our text up like Yehuda did. Um, but what we'd rather have, um, can everyone in the back row please stand on their chairs? We need gradient. <laughs> everyone in between just kind of kneel on their chairs and the front row stand up. No. Okay, they no. don't want to do it either, so I'm not. All right. <laughs> um, so if you think about it, he writes a lot more scene as Ruby. No Gary, Johnson, Never Say Die, Psych, Hoobie, NFC, Earworm, QR Tools, and I'm sure more that he's even forgotten about all C. He doesn't like Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this, oh, test, all right. And this is Ryan. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan likes kittens, ponies, and Emacs. He is totally in love with his ponytail. He wishes, he wishes Sting never left the police. Uh, it's true. He fears nothing except mushrooms and asparagus. He it's true. really hates it when I sing. And it's I do, true. I do every day. And he wears the same colors every day. He also hates photos, so his was redacted. All true. So what is a bad idea? Well, in a sense, these slides are a bad idea. <laughs> Not these slides, which we could have written, but these slides. <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing we needed to be able to do was figure out how to identify a bad idea. We came up with this field guide. First and foremost, it needs to be well engineered and tested. It needs to be useless-ish. It needs to follow Poe's law. And it needs to have a spiral nature, or what we call Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> That's hard to read. Sorry about that. It will come clearer now. Or it won't change the page. So well engineered and tested. Bad ideas um, are not bad code. Um, that it, it really, you'd have to have a well engineered and, and written code to overcome the fact that the idea itself is terrible. Um, so really, in a sense, you need to be wary of the well-tested project, because that's a sign that someone might be trying to overcome the fact that they know it's a bad idea in the first place. <laughs> These projects need to be useless-ish, meaning they need to do something, but that something might just be something you don't want or need. They, they might be software looking for a solution. They, want, they might want to be a solution to a problem that doesn't exist. My favorite, Poe's Law. How many people are familiar with Poe's Law right now? Oh, awesome. Um, so basically, the idea is that without a winking smiley or other blatant display of humor, it's impossible to create a parody of fundamentalism that someone won't mistake for the real thing. And the converse <laughs> is true as well. It's impossible to have something serious about fundamentalism that someone won't take for a parody. So in the same sense, um, from a high level, they sound perfectly reasonable. And when you start getting into the details, not so much. Um, they are a solution looking for a problem. They're not going to solve any immediate problems at hand, but they will generate more. <laughs> and they, everyone always ignores that guy in the corner going, really? Because <laughs> what does he know? 
So bad ideas also need to be spiral in nature. And this can be um, something where maybe a bad idea will build on top of another one and, and hopefully have cyclic dependencies, <laughs> hopefully. So some hypothetical examples of this might be uh, an XML multi-file format a la Java's jar format. Um, and really all these hypothetical ideas are just things we, we haven't necessarily written yet. Uh, DRB <laughs> over RFID. Uh, two laptops facing each other with webcams um, talking to each other over DRB with uh, QR code or barcode. <laughs> Assembly optimized web pages. I, I actually tried that, but it was hard. Um, and NFFI. <laughs> so Yoda, Yoda is an, is an example that we picked because it shows that bad ideas can be very high level. Um, it basically, test work frameworks we've seen as, as being the new IRC bot. Um, and Yoda defines a spec language in the direction that we think that, that speckers think. Let's take a look at this. We have the, the canonical bowling uh, example. So bowling.yoda starts the, the spec. Uh, score zero for gutter game, it will. Um, then we go through our, our setup code where we, we hit a zero on every single uh, frame. Bowling.score zero, it is. <laughs> Bowling.score 42, it is not. <laughs> and here we can see that, that if we set up our, our initial score wrong, that that fails with <laughs> fail me <laughs> <laughs> And I, I, I take it they get the point. <laughs> so as far as our whoops identifier goes, um, how is it well engineered? Well, it's 65 lines of Jedi Master Ruby. Uh, it only has three conditionals and one loop. Um, it flogs to 41.1 with an average of 4.1 per method. The, um, International Ruby average is about 10 per. Um, so really, how can you go wrong? Um, it's so simple, we wrote it on one bus ride up from downtown. <laughs> so how is it useless? Well, the minimum a test framework needs is one assertion. We've got two, so that's <laughs> twice as good. But it's not exactly very expressive, but it doesn't actually need to be. Poe's got nothing on Yoda. Really? <laughs> Do we need another test framework? No, but we had a bus ride to go on, so <laughs> it happened. And as far as its spiral nature goes, it is a test framework, so you could use it in every single project you've got. So Wilson, how many people are familiar with Wilson? <laughs> Sad people. <laughs> <laughs> so Ruby, we all know and love, is slow. Uh, and C is not, but why would you write in C when you can write in assembly? <laughs> really? Um, so I picked this one because it's a good example that bad ideas can be very low level as well. Uh, Wilson generates x86 machine code via natural feeling Ruby DSL. Um, and it was named after the very metal Wilson Milkovich, partially because the metal gem name was already taken. Um, so here's an example of some inline C for a method called C um, that counts from zero to n plus one and returns uh, the result. And now this needs to be as fast as possible because there are a lot of web pages that have to do this type of counting. <laughs> so <laughs> we write this in C so that our web pages are fast. Now, as is obvious, <laughs> we can see that this assembly code does the exact same thing. Oh, I knew that. I knew I, it. <laughs> Obvious. Um, so really, what we need to compare is the benchmarks. And as you can see here. Look at that. Wow. They're, they're almost exactly the same car. I am blown away. So would you really want to go with something in C, where you have to invoke GCC and compile and link and all that stuff? Or would you rather write it in assembly code? <laughs> now, as far as our whoops identifier goes, uh, Wilson is whip smart. Uh, it generates machine code directly. It does not have any dependencies whatsoever. It does not use any external resources. There's no shell outs, there's no invocations, no nothing. Um, it parses a 60 page x86 spec into instructions in their opcodes and builds its entire DSL based on that. Smirt. <laughs> it's 
far as the uses of this thing goes, um, it's really good at writing fast code and really good at crashing quickly. Um, and I, I really, really, truly hope that no one actually uses this in production, truly. Somebody does, I'm, I'm sure. sure some, anyone? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Postman's dispatch. So I, my original intent behind Wilson was to be able to use this to write an absolutely pure Ruby method dispatch uh, for, um, well, Rubinius or some implementation of Ruby. Um, but it turns out that writing an assembly is really hard. And um, I got laid off of Rubinius anyways, and then I got distracted by other stuff. So <laughs> whatever. Um, and as far as the spiral nature goes, it was intended to be the method dispatcher. So how much more spiral can you get? <laughs> Oh, my turn. <laughs> um, <laughs> this, uh, this project is called Wank. Um, <laughs> Wank uh, produces human-readable Marshall format. Um, and you might ask, why Wank? <laughs> and this is, this is the answer. Marshall data is too hard to read. So we marshal, marshal a nil, and we get this, these bytes out, can't, can't read it, therefore useless. Um, YAML is also hard to read. Look at that. I don't even know what that says. Unreadable, therefore useless. <laughs> Websites, readable. Exhibit A, perfect. <laughs> so the field guide. I want to talk a little bit about how um, Wank is implemented, so we're going to take a look at the guts. Um, it has a few language dependencies, Ruby and YAML, of course, very obvious why, and XML or HTML. So the way that, the way that Wank works is the idea is that data is a tree. We have this data structure here in Ruby. Um, if we were to graph this data out in memory, it might look like this. This is how it's represented. Uh, HTML is also represented as a tree, <laughs> right? So all we really need to do is a little bit of translation. <laughs> but the problem is, is that HTML data is a subset of Ruby, meaning that um, in HTML you can really only represent strings, lists, and maps. So we need a way to get the um, Ruby object graph into something that we can represent with those data types. And that's where YAML comes in. <laughs> now, a YAML representation is exactly that, just lists, maps, and strings. So if we take Ruby and turn it into a YAML AST, we have something like this. And we could say, translate this AST into an HTML AST <laughs> and produce an HTML document. And that is exactly what Wank does. <laughs> so here's some sample, sample use. All we do is we say, Take this data structure, wank, HTML, Marshall, dump it. And we end up, obviously, very easy to read. This is our data structure <laughs> right here. And what's even better is in the browser. Awesome. <laughs> Super obvious. And, and even better, we can wank in style. <laughs> apply, apply a little style sheet to that, and boom, look at that. <laughs> Everything you want to know. So, and of course, um, Poe's Law, it is, uh, it <laughs> this explains it. We can, we can completely round trip over to HTML, and of course the HTML goes back into YAML, which then goes into Ruby. Um, even better, we can wank over DRB. <laughs> so why use Marshall format over DRB when we can serialize everything as HTML? So we can read it. Yeah. I know you're looking at all that network traffic, like, oh, what's this thing doing? Oh, see some HTML. And we can do it in one line. Literally, one line. That does it. <laughs> of course, we can do the usuals, wank on rack, <laughs> wank on rails. <laughs> really, you can wank anywhere. <laughs> ah, never say die. How many of you are using this in production? <laughs> everyone, that's everyone that's using um, Wilson is using this in production, I guarantee. <laughs> oh. Never Say Die is a library I wrote which helps you rescue from seg faults. It also helps you create seg faults. 
It's based on lib sig segv, which lets you do pageable virtual memory, memory map to uh, blah, uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but really, the idea behind it is that in Ruby, we're allowed to trap um, ints. We can trap these signals. So why can't we trap segv signal? So never say die lets us do that. We can begin, do some stuff, uh-oh. Seg V, rescue, fix the memory, we're done. It's safe. It's totally safe. <laughs> now, field guide time. Never say die is very well engineered. It is fully tested, which is why it ships with this method, the seg V method, because of course we have to generate a seg V in the tests. How right? else would you test it? So let, let's take a look at, at a sample usage here. Uh, so we start this, never say die, segv, and we return the maverick. <laughs> it's useless. -ish 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 -ish. <laughs> if you think you need this, you probably do. <laughs> Sad, but true. For example, our beautiful, our beautiful assembly language. Sometimes, sometimes this dies. And if it does, we just fall right back onto the slow one. It's fine, you move on, no problems. Totally safe. We can e even put never say die on rails, because you know, uptime. <laughs> okay. The next one is uh, Pooby. <laughs> Pooby is a PHP runtime embedded in Ruby. Now, why would we do this? Also, you can. <laughs> and the thing is, PHP programmers. They're cheap. So, like I said, Pooby is a PHP runtime embedded in Ruby. Um, oh, we got to talk about the source of this. <laughs> Ryan and I were on the bus, and Ryan said, hey, wouldn't it be awesome if we could run PHP in Ruby? <laughs> and then I did it. <laughs> That's a win by two, as far as I'm concerned, because I didn't have to implement it. <laughs> so uh, Pooby is well engineered, field guide time, and we're going to talk about the internals of Pooby and how it works. Um, here is a, a diagram of, oh, ouch. OK. There we go. So here's an example of a uh, Ruby variable moving into a PHP into a PHP runtime. The middle here is a C proxy, which is the part I wrote. Um, the the Ruby variable moves into the into the C proxy. The C proxy knows how to communicate with the PHP runtime puts that into a uh, weak ref table. Is there any alcohol in the room? <laughs> <laughs> and it's into the PHP runtime. So we have a weak ref table, the, uh, it, which stores the PHP object memory location, as in the, the actual location in memory as an int, and points <laughs> to the value. <laughs> Great idea, right? Right? <laughs> Luckily, we have six seg v, or, and never say die. So here's an example of uh, PHP calling Ruby. PHP then communicates back to the same, the same uh, C proxy. It looks up the variable in the weak ref table and then knows which Ruby object to look up. Gives that back over to PHP. So PHP calling Ruby. Um, or excuse me, sorry, Ruby calling PHP. So Ruby can call methods on things defined in PHP. And the way this happens is it asks the uh, C, C proxy for a variable from the PHP runtime, 
um, returns that to the C proxy. The C proxy then creates a new object proxy, which knows how to communicate methods between um, the Ruby runtime and the uh, PHP runtime. It's a little bit simplified, but high level. So here's some actual I code. Want, I want my blue back. <laughs> We're gonna look at some actual pooby code. Yes, we did. I don't know if you guys noticed the gradient. It's actually a gradient. It took me hours to pick this. <laughs> so here we start a new PHP runtime, evaluate some PHP, and then pull the value from the PHP runtime back into Ruby. Uh, here we actually pull out a PHP array, and oh, I forgot to mention this. I actually don't know any PHP. <laughs> Um, so I found out, like, during the course of this, I found out that apparently arrays in PHP are not actually arrays. So we have to have this little pooby array proxy object. Because apparently their arrays are ordered maps or They're something. crazy. Some, I don't know. Something. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> so, and an example of shoving a uh, Ruby object over into the PHP runtime, we have this class fun, which has fun times. And we create a new instance of that, put it into the uh, PHP runtime, and we're able to access methods on the Ruby object from the PHP runtime. It is built like this. <laughs> you got your PHP in my Runtimes. <laughs> so, really should have done that. Uh, yeah. Oh, ah. the one on the right is PHP. Sorry. It's <laughs> and it's brown. Yeah. So anyway, turns into this. There, there. Ah. Man. There we go. Yeah. Now just invert That's your... That's actually worse in a better way. <laughs> invert your eyes and the colors will be perfect. <laughs> so it, it produces what I like to call the circle of terrible. <laughs> this is Poe's Law, by the way. So next up is the um, S part, our, our dependency trees here, cyclic dependencies, whatever S is. Can I switch it back? Yes, yes, switch it back. We're gonna talk about web adapters. Um, I've written a couple web adapters, one for Webrick, because of course, of course this PHP runtime isn't useful unless we can run, say, WordPress, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> so uh, we're gonna show some code. We, hand, we have to handle PHP events because PHP just sends events back into the, the host application. And we have a class to do that. Don't read this. You'll hurt yourselves. Um, this just handles that. Just it trust handles, us. It works. It works, believe me. Um, it handles the body. It handles the headers, whatever. And then here's the actual adapter code. Don't read this. Hurt your head. It works. All this does is take um, environment information from uh, Webrick and put that into the PHP runtime such that um, we can do right things, I guess. We also have a rack adapter because rack is totally hip. Um, we call it frack. It's 50 <laughs> lines. It's totally hip. I was going to enter this in the contest thing, but um, I figured I didn't want to make the other contestants feel bad. <laughs> Here's the code for it. Um, it. You don't need to read it again. It does the same thing. And we're going to do, what we're going to do now is we're going to do a pooby blarg. Um, and DHH did this in 15 minutes, but we can do it in two. <laughs> so right now we're getting the latest WordPress from WordPress.org. Um, <laughs> yeah, create our little database here. We're creating the MySQL database, or our, our WordPress database. Um, unzipping WordPress. Then we go into the WordPress directory, and I'm starting up frack here down at the bottom, in case you can't read. That starts up Webrick on port LOLOL. <laughs> uh, so we access that, 
create our little configuration file, uh, and whoops, we have a freaking blog. <laughs> You so, sick bastards. <laughs> <laughs> so logging in, doing our thing here, and then we got a blog. Um, yeah, so it's like loading stuff. Hello, what did I put here? Hello, RubyConf. Hello, RubyConf. How much, how are we for time? Okay, we got time, I think. Okay. Um, so then we'll go visit the site, and hello, yeah, we totally have a blog. <laughs> and then, I think, yep, so it totally works, and then to prove it, I switch back here, this is our, this is our Webrick log, so I, I believe me, I'm, I'm not lying to you. Um, yes, I think, so that, I that is it for that. We'll, we'll now move on to Enterprise. Scale is software at its finest. So enterprise's guiding principles are, and we all, we all know this, we can all agree on this, it's Ruby, true in the core. Ruby does not scale. <laughs> Everyone knows this, but XML scales like a boss. <laughs> so, I wish Tim was here, of course he's not. If we could just convert Ruby into XML. Scale. Yeah, it would scale. And we can. The secret is in trees. This, this is another bus conversation, wasn't it? Yes. Oh, yes. So, Ryan and I are on the bus. The fail bus. <laughs> the short fail bus. <laughs> so, so Ryan says to me, oh boy, in Ruby, in Ruby parser, I sure wish I could search my ASTs using some sort of language for searching trees. And I said, oh, you mean XPath? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, no. And I was like, I was like, I can just take your AST and turn that into an XPath document, and then you can use XPath. And he got mad. <laughs> <laughs> So then Very I true. had to do it. I had to do it. <laughs> so it is well engineered. We're going to talk about the engineering now. We have here's some Ruby code. I touched on this a little bit earlier. Um, Ruby, the the Ruby code can actually be uh, thought of as a tree. So we have this two plus ten. It can turn into this particular parse tree. Two plus ten goes into the parse tree like that. Um, XML is also is also represented in memory as a tree. <laughs> so we have this root, you know, if there was just, so we use Nokogiri to turn that, turn that um, XML into a tree. If only there was some way we could translate one tree into another, then we would become enterprise. <laughs> right? Right? Absolutely. So, uses. <laughs> we can do that, enterprise does that. Uses. Um, We have advanced metaprogramming <laughs> techniques. Very, very advanced. Um, here's an example of the code. Down at the bottom here, we have this class foo, foo instance variable, foo.hello. And what we're going to do is parse that, turn it into an XML, XML tree. So enterprise, sexml, <laughs> uses, parse tree, uses um, Ruby parser and converts that into an XML document. And we can, we can treat it like a normal Nokogiri XML document and actually traverse the tree using XPath and do perform changes to the XML tree and then output that back to Ruby. <laughs> so very, just a very simple example, we're taking this code at the bottom and turning it into this. And that's all I really wanted to be able to do. Right, I exactly. Mean, and it does it perfectly. But the problem is, the problem with this code, there's a problem. I don't know if you guys noticed what the problem is. I was thinking small. There's not enough, it's not enterprise enough. There's not enough XML. <laughs> if only there was a way that we could take that XML document using another XML document and turn that into a third XML document. <laughs> That's enterprise. <laughs> 
we would be three times more enterprise. <laughs> and, and in truth, we can. We can take an XSLT style sheet like this. And Isn't that beautiful? You all, know, you all know exactly what this is doing, it's right? It's like poetry. Right? Totally clear. In fact, you can Obvious. tell it's converting foo to bar. <laughs> That's what it's doing. You so, really didn't need to explain it to me. Ah, uh, yeah. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> so really, we just take this normal sexml document, get our XSLT, perform the transform, and then output back to Ruby does exactly the same thing as our previous Ruby code. XML, sucka. <laughs> We really wish Tim was here. <laughs> Pose law. Code is XML? <laughs> really? <laughs> the name, enterprise, everything about this project? Is it, I think it's your turn now, isn't it? Oh yeah, it is. Spiral downward. You, you're, yeah, I this, can't talk this about this. This is the downward spiral. <laughs> so I was thinking how best to take advantage of enterprise. <laughs> we decided the Rails wasn't enterprisey enough. I mean, yeah, it can serve up XML and everything, but there's no XML in it. So we fixed that. <laughs> so here we have a regular Rails app. It's got some real tests that will fail if the model and the, the database aren't right. Um, you can see that they all pass. And uh, I've got an isolated uh, vendor gems directory. Uh, so let's look at the active record lib directory for all the RB files. And we can see that there's plenty. If we count them, there's 51 of them. And now I'm going to call enterprise AR. And we're going to enterprise all those. We're going to convert them to XML and then turn around and gzip all the RB files so they cannot be used. <laughs> so we do a find again. And we see that there's one file and that file is driving a bug we couldn't figure out. We think it's in lib XML. And we can see that we have 50 XML files and 50 RBGZ files. And we're going to run our tests again. Oh, I love this part. I love this part, too. It's exciting. Yeah, it's so good. So, so what's happening here is... Is there is a pony over there? Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Look, so well, there's <laughs> tests. I think they work. Will they work? I'm so I, excited. I so. so excited. Uh, oh, by the way, this, this video is shot in real time. Absolutely real time. Um, and the truth is, the tests actually run in the same amount of time. They just don't necessarily load in the same amount of time. But <laughs> Tony! <laughs> so there are some actual benefits of us working on Enterprise Rails and Enterprise and, and all this failboat. Um, <laughs> is that we did actually find some bugs in Ruby to Ruby and some bugs in Nokogiri and possibly a bug in, in libxml. And I could have found and fixed those bugs at any time, but I wasn't looking for them. So apparently, a bad idea is a good reason to work and fix things. So let's bring all this together. <laughs> <laughs> I get to do this. <laughs> do you want this? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> The, the, the correct pronunciation here is pooby on fails. <laughs> all right, all right. So we're gonna start up, this is a normal, normal Rails project. Um, we go into the old Rails project here and I'm popping into the Vim window, grabbing uh, the config environment thingy and then um, we gotta set this up with uh, Pooby, right? Because you got to require the got to require the gem. This is so wrong. <laughs> Supposedly, I don't have to do that, but uh, I suck or something. I don't know. <laughs> so we're gonna generate. Oh, in Rails, everything's plural, so we generate the PHP's controller, the controller, <laughs> right? I suppose I could have named that codes, but I don't know if you can consider it codes. So we opened up index PHP. <laughs> so we do the PHP info. I just learned that the other day. Totally <laughs> serious. So port 3000, hit, hit localhost, port 3000, the PHP's controller, and we're running that. 
So there's more. There's more. Open up the PHP's controller, the index method. We're going to set set some IVAR in here that we want to display to the entire world. And um, we can actually access the controller through my magic at variable <laughs> and get the get the message. So we have hello world there. And then and then to, to top that off, we're gonna open up the application layout, but we're gonna do this in ERB and set up our little HTML here so uh, we can mix PHP and ERB because I don't know. I don't know PHP. We'll let all the future PHP programmers that I'm going to hire uh, use that, and then I'll use I'll use the ERB and load that up, and then there we have mixing PHP and, and ERB, <laughs> and you can see all the requests are being served up by Rails. This is not a joke. <laughs> 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 so we haven't done Enterprise Pivi Rails yet. Sorry, fails. Uh, I mistitled <laughs> it. Um, we haven't written it yet, but we figured it'd only take about 30 more minutes. Um, but really, we needed to know, and maybe we should just ask you guys, how much do we charge for this? <laughs> this is Enterprise. Each millions each. Each, each <laughs> CPU core. <laughs> so in conclusion. It's, it's more than okay if your idea is bad. Just practice good engineering, you know, for fun. Uh, we made 2009 the worst year for Ruby ever. <laughs> and together, we can make 2010 even, even worse. Even worse. Thank, Thank you. you. than the Rails ones. You know, I may have missed that. <laughs> we have another selling point. <laughs> yeah, <Francis>. so fast. <laughs> have you considered using Enterprise and XSLT to write a refactoring browser? <gasps> have we considered? Really <laughs> 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 no, we have not considered using Enterprise and XSLT to write a refactoring browser, you sick bastard. <laughs> Of PHP into XML to be compatible with the externalized version? Oh my god. <laughs> I think my brain just melted. <laughs> I'm not even going to repeat that. So <laughs> don't have to have the question was. Have we ever considered buying a car instead of riding that damn bus? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, we have. Doesn't Aaron already have a car? <laughs> Aaron has a car, two scooters, a boat, um, <laughs> a pet fish, and something else. And none of them work. <laughs> <laughs> but his software does. <laughs> Anything else? Thank you very much. <laughs>